Hi there folks, Borislav247 here with another Days Gone video and on this video I am going to show you my guide to scoring big on the Black Friday challenge. Now I do already have a video by the same name in my video collection however it is very soon about to be deleted as I wanted to make a new up-to-date video that really shows all the steps required in much more detail and as well as this I have more information that I want to be able to show. So without any further ado folks I'm not going to ramble on too much at this point I'm going to get straight to it now and start going through all the processes that are required. Right folks the two rings that are required for this challenge are the bullets and the ram rings. As well as this, folks, try and make sure that you have golds in the other challenges in order to benefit from all the patch perks that they provide. Now, before you actually start to play this challenge, you ideally want to know where all the weapons and all the explosives are. And as you can see on screen, folks, I have put up a very detailed map showing exactly where all these items are. This will help you immensely, especially when the action really starts to kick off. By knowing where everything is beforehand, it will save you a lot of time and effort. Okay folks, step one is about to start, obtaining the special abilities. Now, before I actually start to work on the Freakers in terms of trying to collect as many free careers as possible, there are a number of items that you can collect from the Nero station that is behind the sawmill. So this is the perfect opportunity at the start of the challenge because you do have a bit of time on your hands and uh, you don't have a great deal of free careers at the start. The beauty of these items that I am looking to pick up is the fact that they do not cost anything. It does vary as to what you will get, but you are ideally looking for bandages and med kits. Uh, the only other things you are likely to pick up is, yep, the PCA tech and scrap. Both of these are freaking useless. Scrap especially because you do not use melee weapons on this particular challenge. Okay folks, that's me now got the last of the items I can possibly get from the Nero area, so I'm now looking to pick up another weapon, which is right here, it's the Eliminator. And I'm now going to go to work on the Freakers in terms of trying to get as many Freaker ears as possible. Now, a lot of people will be wondering why the choice of weapons that I have chosen to start with. And there is one or two reasons, but the main reason is this. These weapons, although they are not too bad at close range, they are absolutely useless when it comes to starting and maintaining a good multiplier. So basically folks, when I reach step number four, I will never use these weapons ever again, which makes them the perfect weapons to be using at this stage. Because they cost very little to uh, purchase and you get rather a lot of free careers back in return. And I've got a list of the weapons that I recommend you using on uh, step one of uh, this process. They really do um, do a good job for very little free careers. Now folks, I do feel there is quite a number of advantages in starting the challenge this way. For one, you're under no pressure because there is no multiplier to worry about at this point. So basically all you have to focus on is basically shooting the freakers, just making sure you don't take too much in the way of damage and try and ideally take them out at close range. That way not only will you get more um, bullet penetration out of the guns that you're using but because you're so close to the freakers you will actually pick up the freaker ears there and then which is why I like to use this area so much. This area is basically one of my what I like to call robot lines basically a run route that I can just constantly do uh, without having to give too much thought to. Uh, there is very uh, minor adjustments I have to make every time depending on where the hordes are coming from. 
But uh, at this stage, folks, I'm just heading over for another weapon. And then basically it is just going to be more rinse and repeat. Because in order to get these five particular special abilities, you require 600 Freakerears. And as you can see, I'm uh, already sitting at 154. That's about to move on to a much larger number. As uh, this area here is fantastic in order to get uh, a good number of uh, Freaker Ears. It's the, the same old story. You're very close to where you're shooting them from, so you're picking up the Freaker Ears automatically. Right then, folks. Um, what I do recommend is once you actually get to the stage where you have a decent amount of Freaker Ears, you want to start picking up the five special abilities as soon as possible. And this is the order that I recommend you get them in, folks. Okay, the first one, Head Rush. This is 250 Freaker Ears to purchase, and it is the best by far. Basically, once you have this, any Freakers that you shoot with headshots will restore health. Very handy to have. The next special ability is Two Birds, One Bullet. 150 free careers to purchase this, folks, and it is basically better bullet penetration. The third special ability is called Ear to the Ground. It only costs 50 free careers, and once you have it, you basically have survival vision. The fourth ability, once you can afford it, is called Just Roll With It. It is only 50 free careers, and basically, once you have picked this up, any dive rolls that you do will use less stamina. And finally, folks, a very important one. Carry that weight. It costs 100 free careers, but basically allows you to pick up double the amount of any of the explosives and various items. However, this doesn't include the bandages or medkits. Okay, folks, for anyone who is looking to basically uh, have a quicker way of uh, obtaining the first 600 free careers that you require in order to get the five special abilities, this is a perfect way of going about it. Uh, basically, just pick up the Stinger weapon, and from there, head over to the main horde. From here, I would be looking to get another 60 free ears which would give me 100 and from there I could then climb to the top of the sawmill and purchase the growler which costs a whopping 100 free careers and then take out the horde very quickly in order to get the 600 free careers that I require. And truth be told you'll get a lot more than 600 free careers. Sounds great but this is the problem that I have with this. Basically the Growler is a fantastic weapon in getting a good solid multiplier going. Now at this stage of the game, you're not really interested in that. You want to be fully prepared before starting to work on a multiplier. So the, the fact that you're using a Growler so early makes no sense at all to me. Other than the fact that it is a lot quicker. Now, one or two other things to consider as well. Um, later on in the game, if your multiplier starts to uh, become not quite so solid and you feel it needs a big boost, the Growler is the perfect weapon to get the multiplier back on track. So why would you want to waste one of your Growlers at this stage just to get some free careers faster? And not only that, folks, there is a limited amount of uses that you can... Oh, sorry, there is a limited amount of times that you can actually purchase the Growler because it goes up by the base price every time. First purchase will cost you 100 free careers. The second purchase is 200. The third is 300. And because you can only carry 999 free careers, after you have reached uh, 900 free careers for a purchase of the Growler, it will disappear. So you can only purchase nine growlers throughout the course of the entire run. This folks in a nutshell is why I recommend you do not use the growler at this stage in the game folks. It's as simple as that.
Right, folks, once all five special abilities are in place, I like to make sure I have no ammunition left in any of my weapons, as it's time for step two, surprise boxes. Now, there are nine locations where these surprise boxes will appear, and they will always appear in this particular order. Starting with the first location, which is beside the attractor's location, and always try and make sure, of course, that you can get to any of these boxes and get out safely. Location 2 is at the front of the sawmill, an area that most people know very well. On this occasion, I actually get another primary weapon. If you ever get weapons offered, always take them. You can drop them and then pick up your previous weapon. That's a good one to know, folks. Location 3, again, a nice easy one to get to. It is at the very top of the sawmill roof. And on this occasion, folks, I'm uh, pretty sure I get, yes, a special weapon. Because I don't have any, very handy, I can just pick that up and move on to location 4. And location 4 is at the very back end of the sawmill area. Actually quite close to where the bike is situated. And worth noting, folks, it's not only just guns that you will receive from these boxes. You can also receive explosives you can also receive cocktails as well as bandages and med kits as well location five bottom of the metal bridge um, not the easiest of locations to get to especially once you start your runs but uh, when you're actually going for the first nine locations it's not too bad location six is located in the nero site very near to where the head rush ability is purchased Again, a nice location for the box because you do have a lot of escape routes. Now, we're now going on to the two most dangerous location boxes. The first is located in this building, basically close to where the stinger is. Now, as precarious as this location looks, you do actually have an escape route, basically, to the left here. And it is up these crates here. Now, location 8, I only recommend you ever go into this room on two occasions. The first I'm going into purely to get um, this surprise box taken care of. After this, I will only ever visit this room once more in order to get some remote bombs. And even then, I will only get them on one occasion because that room really is a death trap. Location 9, the top floor of the sawmill. This is the easiest way to get to it, folks. I like to start uh, basically climbing up until I'm at this section, then jump through that window there, and then from there, it's up these steps, and quite literally, the ninth box is right there. All nine boxes will cost you 450 free careers, and it's really worth doing, folks, because you can pick up some absolute bargains. Right then, folks, before moving on to step three, just a couple of points that I wanted to emphasize before moving on. The first is in regards to the weapons that get offered from these boxes. Always take them. Even if you have a weapon that is of the same type, and by this I mean if you, for example, have a primary weapon and the surprise box offers you an alternative primary weapon, Always take it. When you take the weapon, it will drop the old weapon that you did have. From here, all you simply have to do is pick up your old weapon and it will drop the new weapon, leaving it on the floor where it can be used at a later date. And this brings me nicely on to point number two. Always make a note of the locations of where you have dropped these weapons. It's very handy because as the game progresses and lots of things go on, you may forget. If you actually just take the time to pause the game at this point and then just say write down the name of the weapon and then just say for example write down the location now because the surprise boxes all come from nine locations every time that is how i would normally go about it so for example if it was one from the top of the sawmill roof i know that is location three if I have to drop a weapon down there, that would be fine. I'd simply make a note of the, the weapon, followed by location three. 
and that way I know exactly where it is. Just following these two points alone will make things so much better for yourself as the game goes on, folks. Right then, folks, on to step three, getting ready to rumble. Or in this case, it is quite literally just preparing for war. Now at this point, folks, I have picked up a number of weapons and items uh, over the course of step two. And step three is basically all about getting the rest of the items which I currently don't have. Now at this point I do realise just as I've approached the focus cocktails that I already got some of those uh, off one of the boxes earlier on. So at this point it's never a bad idea to take a look at uh, the inventory wheel just to see what you do and do not have. So I know from this uh, area here that uh, I can pick up mines, which are just around the corner here, proximity mines. You also get proximity bombs, but they are actually located um, inside the sawmill. Now health cocktails down here, yes, most certainly want those. And this room, I will be perfectly honest folks, I'm going in for remote bombs, but I would recommend to most people, just don't bother. Because they don't do a great deal of damage, they are expensive to buy and they are in one of the worst locations in this entire uh, challenge. Uh, that room really is a death room folks, I cannot specify that enough. Uh, or sorry, I can't stress that enough, it's really that bad. But at this point I am now looking to get medkits, because the medkits are always uh, obtained from the Nero site and they are right over in this section here. Because although I do have a special ability that will allow me to um, get health back from headshots, there will come a time at some point where you will get surrounded by a big large group of freakers and you really don't want to be without a med kit at this point because if you don't have one that's it, all your hard work could be over very very quickly. So at this point it's also worth stressing folks that any of the guns that I actually uh, managed to get from the uh, Step 2 when I was getting them from the surprise boxes over the course of um, Step 3 I will use them because uh, you've basically got to have uh, some way of keeping the clock going and um, also before I actually start Step 4 I will pick up some very specific weapons because once I actually get to step four there are a certain few weapons that I will use for the, the job pretty much from start to finish and I will list exactly what they all are folks but uh, at the moment it is quite literally just picking off the last of uh, the items that I require uh, yeah not a great place to be uh, standing too much there but uh, yeah at this point I've managed to uh, get back around to this area here because napalm's definitely one of the most important and at this point here I'm actually showing this for a very good reason because if you are struggling to get uh, a lot of the items from inside the sawmill this is a perfect way uh, during step 3 to do it basically head them right up to the very back of the sawmill area and it is quite extensive you will be surprised at just how far the the boundaries are for this particular challenge um, I'm just quite literally at this point looking to get the entire horde um, behind me so that I can safely head over to get the last few items and at this point folks there isn't actually that much left that I need to get attractors yep they do come in handy. Now, these are the last of the items. Proximity bombs. Um, very handy to have, but at the same time, yes, they are in a nasty area. So, I do sparingly get those from time to time. Even though the other mines are a tad dearer to buy, they are in a much better location and a much safer location. Now, at this point, this is now all about the weapons. 
because I have picked up all the items that I need, so I am now looking to get the guns that I require to start my run. And there are three very specific guns that I am going for. The first is the sidearm, which I always go for. It's the only sidearm I use once I actually start uh, on step four, and that is the SMP, unsurprisingly. The second weapon that I'm looking for is the Chicago Chopper, one of the most underrated guns uh, there is. Uh, not only does it have insanely quick um, firepower, but at close range, this bad boy is lethal. You can actually slow down your fire rate and still get amazing uh, kill ratios with it. It really is uh, that good a weapon. Now, at this point, there are two more weapons that I want to get my hands on. Um, the first I'm actually going to go for is the Growler. Purely because it's going to save me coming back to this area, because the last weapon that I want is going to be the MG55, and you actually have to cross the bridge in order to get it. Now, when I pick up the MG55, I will drop the Growler, but that's okay, because I'm going to pick the Growler straight back up again. And that is me, folks. Now ready for war. Right then, folks, here we go. Step four, creating and maintaining a solid multiplier. I have all the weapons, I have all the items. It is now putting it all to good use. Um, the start of the multiplier, I always like to start now with the Grommer. Um, you'll see why over the space of the next few minutes, just why I like to start with this weapon. It is insanely fast and it gets the multiplier solid very, very quickly. Now, I can't stress enough, if you start being a little bit lax about things throughout the course of any uh, run on Black Friday, you will find yourself coming undone because it's no different to any of the other Endless Horde challenges. You have to keep the pressure on, you have to keep the kill rate high. Um, I am using my tried and tested robot line. I love to use um, this method, especially at the start of the runs, because it keeps the, it keeps the firepower on the Freakers all the time. And it also gives you a lot of other advantages too. At the moment, I am just using the Growler purely because if you actually try selecting any throwables and whatnot, you will automatically drop the Growler. So for that reason alone, I always make sure at the start that I am using the Growler and Growler only until I have used up all its ammunition. So as you can see already, folks, it is looking very, very good. Already close to 500 on the multiplier. Um, by following uh, a robot line which I'm taking at the moment, I'm picking up all the free careers um, all the time. So, so you will find that eventually when you leave this area, because you can't stay in this area indefinitely, at some point you are going to have to start moving to collect other weapons. Um, then basically you will have the free careers in order to purchase the weapons that you want very easily. Okay folks, now that I am out of ammunition for the Growler, I'm now turning to my other weapons. And I have got, of course, the MG55, the Chicago Chopper and the SMP9. And as well as this folks, I'm going to start to employ some of the robots. So, over the next few minutes, I am going to follow my uh, robot line as always. And I will just basically keep the pressure on the Freakers. But I'm going to start with an napalm here. Very handy from this point, uh, and what I like to do once I have thrown the napalm is basically just use gunplay as a way of just holding the freakers back. Once the napalm has done its job, then yes, then I start to go into uh, full uh, <laughs> full gunplay mode with them where I just let them have it. But uh, I like to try and let the napalm Molotov actually do its job. And uh, the other beauty about this robot line, um, folks, is the escape options that you have and it is all about these log piles you can see you can actually take out some of these log piles with explosions if you like one of my biggest pieces of advice that i can give you is just don't do it as you can see here the freakers are coming from all sorts of directions 
and it's the log files basically that allow me to get my escape routes sorted very, very quickly. And in between all that, I can just rain down gunfire on them. So, over the next few minutes folks, it's just going to be rinse and repeat. But, I will take the time in the next uh, 30 seconds or so, I will actually put up on screen just exactly the weapons that I will actually be using on uh, a run like this when I'm looking for the big scores. Now, I will stress this doesn't include throwables, I'm just going to put a list of the guns themselves because the throwables I pretty much use all of them and just try and replace them as and when I get the chance. But the guns I am very specific about, there is only a few of them I will ever use in one of these runs. And uh, here they are now folks. The worth noting folks of these 11 weapons that I show on screen, the US 556 and the PPSH 41 I will only use when I'm in a bit of a bind because truthfully folks they are not fantastic weapons but they are still good enough to get the job done in order to maintain a reasonably good multiplier. The other 9 weapons they are absolutely go to's because they are very fast firing and they do a very good job with this. Uh, it is worth noting there is a great number of other weapons that I will not touch, uh, the likes of the BFG especially, in fact any sniper uh, rifle for that matter, as well as that, uh, weapons like the Liberator, Auto Shotgun. They're not bad weapons but they are just not good at maintaining a good solid multiplier so that is the reason why I choose not to use them. Now at this stage folks I am very aware that my primary weapon, the Chicago Chopper, is almost out of ammunition. So it's uh, another very good reason why I wanted to show this uh, multiplier run at the start for so long. Because another huge advantage to basically taking on the, the horde in this particular uh, area of the sawmill uh, is this there are a good number of very handy weapons nearby. Um, in terms of primary weapons, you have the SWAT-10, very close by, as well as this, you also have the Rock Chuck, and this is the next weapon that I'm going to be going for. And of course, as well as that, the Chicago Chopper is uh, fairly nearby as well. So I'm going to be taking the time to try and get the Rock Chuck as soon as possible. But before I do that, I want to keep the multiplier going strong. So again, it's a napalm molotov. And now I'm looking to try and get them safely. And a big tip here, folks. Make sure you look properly before heading off that top section. And when you do, make sure you come off it with a dive roll. This will limit the damage that you will take. Because trust me, folks, the big problem you will get is if you land badly, that... Uh, you will lose more health, but the bigger problem is basically the fact that uh, when you land badly, uh, your character will be lying on the floor. And if the horde are fairly close to you, especially in large numbers, that is it folks, that is game over. Because you won't even get the chance to uh, use a med kit before that that upon you. So be very aware of that when coming off um, any areas for that matter that are at the high point. Okay, that's me now out of ammunition for the special weapon, but it's no problem in this area because I'm keeping the run going just basically to show just how good this area is for creating a solid multiplier. I'm again going to use a Napalm Molotov just to keep that multiplier going strong. From here a little bit of crown control with the rock chuck and then from here I'm going to safely try and get off that roof section. Head over to here, there we go, MG45, that is another special weapon in place and I can just basically go to town on the horde. Because truthfully folks, over the course of doing any of the big runs on this challenge, um, mainly because of the location, 
the MG45 is the weapon I probably use the most. And as you can see now folks, uh, I've been uh, working on this multiplier for a wee while now. It's sitting at over 1700 and as you can see the line above it folks hasn't moved. And it will pretty much stay like that now for a wee while, which will give me time to move on to get other weapons as and when I need them quite safely. So there we go folks, that is step 4 pretty much uh, shown. From here I am going to show one or two other things in terms of hints and tips. Some really handy things to know folks before ending this video. Right now folks, my first tip concerns the surprise boxes. If you're fortunate enough to actually get a growler when searching through these boxes, as opposed to using it straight away, take the time to actually try and place it somewhere that you can use it later on once you start your multiplier, because they are fantastic weapons that you do not want to waste. The easiest way to place the growler down is quite simply go to an area that you're happy to drop it at and then basically just select another weapon that way it will drop nice and neatly to the ground and you're good to have it later on right folks tip number two is again to do with the surprise boxes there is one weapon that you can get from the surprise box that you cannot purchase and that is the crossbow if you do happen to get it take the time to use it because it comes with a variety of bolts it is a slow firing weapon, but you will get a good number of Freaker kills, especially with the explosive bolts that take out 10 Freakers every time. Right, tip number three folks is all about the boundaries of the Black Friday challenge. Know your surroundings. There is a fantastic area that I'm actually going to show here that is at the very back of the sawmill area. Head up to this rock section and basically the horde that has been chasing you will all of a sudden stop so you can take your time to really hit them hard at the bottom and then just basically watch for them because they will try and get you from this side but it does give you a little bit of respite while they're basically turning all around and also not only that this is a fantastic way of turning the horde around because there are times in this game where you will start to feel a bit on the trap side this is one location that you can use fully to your advantage in order to get back on top in terms of having control over the oncoming board. And there we have it folks, that is my guide to scoring big on the Black Friday challenge. If you follow the steps that I show on this video, I assure you folks, the big scores are pretty much guaranteed. As always, I'd like to thank you all for watching the video and I hope you all enjoyed it. Take care folks.